Hey everyone, welcome back to another Python programming tutorial. We're still looking at the NPy screen module. In the last video, we were checking out different kinds of forms. As you know, our uh, NPy screen module works kind of with three different core objects or, uh, and classes and things that we work with, which are the form objects, the application objects, and the widget objects. So we've got an application manager that manages all of our forms, forms that are what we kind of see on the screen, and of course the widgets that uh, the things we interact with and work with on the screen. So we were looking at action form and split form. We were checking them out in our documentation and seeing the differences that they had from each other and from the normal form. Now the action form was interesting because it allowed us to create b both an OK button as well as a cancel button, and we had these two nifty little functions that we could that were pretty much callback functions that would uh, interact with and they would run when the user pressed the OK button or the cancel button. So when we worked with this in our code, what we set it up was that uh, just so we could visualize and see what button you had pressed, we had turned off the next form, next active form attribute, and so that way we would never exit the program really, but whenever we press the OK button, the first text box that we have up on our form here, that would display, oh, the OK button was pressed. If we press the cancel button, the second text box that was displayed on our form would say, oh, the cancel button was pressed. So that's how it worked, and this is it when we actually run the code. Like if I hit the cancel button, you can see cancel button is pressed down there, and if I hit the OK button, OK button is pressed up there. But the thing is, Normally, these will exit our program. They will exit the form. And if we don't have any next active form set, then we'd kind of stop executing the program. We'd be all done with the code. But since we've turned this off, that was just for learning purposes, of course. We'd never actually want to leave the user stuck at this infinitely running program. So we had to control C to get out of it. And in this video, I want to use this as an interesting segue to talk about um, notification messages and dialogue pop-ups and that sort of thing within NPy screen. So I'm going to use action form as a way to kind of take advantage of that. I'm going to save this as a new file, 08.py. You notice that I've already kind of gotten started with it, so I'm going to replace that. And in our documentation, right up here at the top of the link, it's actually it's pretty far along in the documentation, but URL is messages.html. So I'm going to fire up that, and I'll get us back to where we were, hopefully. <laughs> okay, cool. Good enough. Hope you guys don't mind seeing that gray bar up the top, it's whatever. So, yeah, these are the functions that allow us to kind of display brief messages and choices. So these functions do just that. There's a big long list of them, and we'll kind of walk through each of them, but you'll notice that a lot of them have a, a ton of optional arguments here. Typically, they all have a default value, so we normally don't have to worry about them, but I want you to know that they exist, and you have the capability to change them if you so desire. So, okay, this first function, notify, is really simple. All it does is it displays a message on the screen. Now, it does not block, and the user cannot interact with it. So you can use it to display a message like, please wait, while other things are happening. So if we use this as a small little message box in our uh, on OK and on cancel uh, functions, it tells us that this function doesn't block and the user can interact with it. Now the fact that it doesn't block means that it's going to go right on to the next line of code immediately after this is run. So since we've press the OK button, and by default, the OK's button functionality will go to the next screen, it'll exit the current form, it'll just go on to the next form. We actually have to turn that back on, remember, so re uncomment what we had up here in our after editing function for the form object. So let's go back to our notify function though. The message is of course the first argument that we need, and that's the string that it's actually kind of displaying, and the title is going to be the title of it. The other arguments for like form color, we'll get into colors real real soon. There is wrap, if the text in the message will wrap around if it's too long for a single line, and wide, which um, I'm wondering if there's any, any description for. I think wide would mean that it would take up the entirety of the screen. Let's actually take a look at it and see what it does. So I'm going to supply the title to be OK button. And uh, we'll copy and paste that same functionality for the cancel button. And I'll 
remove these small comments. But remember, like I was saying, since this does not block, if I press one of these buttons, you'll see, oh hey, the OK button was pressed. I can see that message up there, and we can see this, like, kind of blue box acting as our message box, but I'm way back at my terminal prompt. Like, <laughs> the program exited. I wasn't able to see that box for real. So, what else can we do with it? Actually, yeah, I'll look at the wide tag on this next one, or notify wait. Notify wait is another function that displays the message on the screen and then blocks for a brief amount of time. So the user still can't interact with it, but it's just going to display it out on the screen. Let's try and change these functions to that. Notify wait, and notify wait. Now when I run this, I hit the cancel button, it says the cancel button was pressed. You see there's no buttons here, and hey, it closes the program after a, a brief moment of time. I think it was, what, three seconds? Yeah. And we can't interact with it, there's no button there, but it's just a notification message. Okay. What's next? Oh, let's actually, let's take a look at that wide function, that wide uh, argument and wide tag. So, since these are keyword arguments, or at least they have a default, we can uh, jump to that just by entering wide equals true, rather than having to have to enter all of these default variables. Yes, I think it'll work with that functionality. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so wide will fill up the entire width of the screen. Nice. Now you know. And knowing is half the battle, according to uh, G.I. Joe. <laughs> Notify confirm. This is very simple. It'll display a message and the OK button. The user can scroll through the message if needed. Edit W. I would assume this is edit widget. That is a is a command line argument. Oh, sorry, not a command line argument, but an argument to the function that controls which widget is immediately selected when the dialog is displayed. So zero, there aren't any widgets that it can kind of look at. But if you set it to one, then the OK button will already be active. It'll already be focused on when the message pops up. So I'll show you what this looks like in the code. Simple, we'll just change our function name to notify confirm. And now this will block infinitely until we press that OK button, right? So you can see the OK button is right down here at the bottom right corner. If I hit enter, OK is now in focus. A tab probably would have done the same thing. It doesn't really matter as long as you're interacting with the form. Now when I hit enter again, now we exit of our program because uh, all that really did for us was kind of confirm that we read it. Hence the notify confirm. Now if we set edit W to 1, like it told us in the documentation, by default, OK will already be highlighted. See? Now OK is already in focus. I just have to hit enter once now. So that's kind of handy if you know, you kind of want your users to be able to breeze through things. What else have we got? Notify, OK, Cancel. This one is good because it has a similar functionality as the action form in that it just displays OK as well as Cancel. But you can kind of do a little bit of logic testing here because it'll return true if you press OK and it'll say false if the user selected Cancel. So, we can, we can play with that, right? What is that? Notify, OK, cancel is the name of the function. See, now we got those two options. And is edit W in there? Yeah, edit W is. I kind of wonder which numbers refer to what. Edit W1 might be the OK button. Nope, it's cancel. And then edit W, probably 2, will refer to the OK button. Nice. So it probably goes like from left to right in the order of the buttons being displayed. So that's a good thing to know. And yes and no has the same sort of functionality except yes and no, and they'll return true or false depending on what you answer. So those are the ones that I want to talk about now. I also kind of want to show you um, a little bit more. I guess we can do some of that logic testing. So we can notify 
confirm that, let's say, form has been saved if you hit the OK button. And let's do notify yes, no. Are you sure you want to cancel? So, since this will return yes or no, so if exiting, then we'll say, um, let's see. I want to say we can notify, confirm. form has not been saved. Bye. And the title can be bye bye or something. And then we can do else. So if they say no, I'm curious how we can get back to our original uh, form without having to have to actually exit the, fo exit the form. Can we do that? I'm kind of curious if we can set the next form, rather than doing it in the after editing function, we can do it in our OK, which means that, OK, yeah, we do want to exit, we have saved the, the form, but if we say, and then we can do it down here as well, so if we are exiting, if not, then we'll notify confirm. Like, you may continue working. And then, hopefully, it'll let you stay in the form. Let's let's try it. Let's check it out. 08. My name is John. Last name, Hammond. So if I say, OK, form has been saved. OK, and then we exit out of the program. Cool. If I say, John, then I cancel. Am I, are you sure I want to cancel? And if I say, yes... Then it says, okay, form is not been saved, goodbye. I hit okay, and it exited out of my form. Cool. If I say John, and if I go to cancel, I say, are you sure you want to cancel? And I say no. It says, okay, you may continue working. And then we get right back to our form. Cool. That's kind of nice. So the way that I got that to work was because the set next form has only been set when we actually okay out of it or cancel out of it. So that's when we actually want to exit the program. So I took it out of the after editing function from our form object and just kind of set up that functionality instead in the on OK or on cancel function calls. So that's a little bit of a, I don't know, shift around that, I mean, if you want to do, you certainly can do. That's, I think, one of the simplest ways to kind of confirm whether or not you want to stay on the form or not if you hit cancel or OK. It's just determining what you want to do. But... A good thing to remember is that notify yes, no, and notify OK, cancel, these two choice functions that have a little pop-up message, they'll return true or false. So you can just do an if statement and test with those guys if you want to exit or not, if you do agree to some terms and conditions, if you uh, I want to copy or move a file. You can set up all of these choices however you want them to. But I wanted to show off that functionality to you. Those are the... Uh, brief messages and choice functions in the NPy screen module. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I know this probably turned into a bit of a longer tutorial just for showing off these small functions, but hey, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, well, I'll see you in the next tutorial.